Please join me in the open verse on page 5. God is in his holy place. God who unites those who are held in his house. He is in the In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. bringing to Elisha, the man of God, twenty barley loaves made from the first fruits and the fresh grain of the ear. Elisha said, Give it to the people to eat. But his servant objected, How can I set this before a hundred people? Elisha said, insisted, give it to the people to eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat, and there shall be some left over. And when they had eaten, there was some left over, as the Lord had said. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsible son. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discuss discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. The hand, the hand of the Lord, Lord feeds us. us. The eyes of all look hopefully to you, and you give them their food in due session. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went out across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain and there sat down with his disciples. <clears throat> the Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food to feed them? He said this to test him because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred days' wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place, so the men reclined about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled twelve wicker baskets with fragments, fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Morning. 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 Today is our Catholic family gathering. We are beginning a new tradition here at St. Thomas. And that tradition will be on the last Sunday of the month at the four o'clock mass later today. We will venerate the first-class relic of Saint Peregrine, patron saint of those afflicted with cancer, 
along with Eucharistic adoration and benediction. But if you noticed in your handout, your homily handout that is in your bulletin, that when I said that today as a Catholic family we gather, I used specifically the small letter C. And there's a reason I did that. The small letter C word Catholic has a very specific meaning. It means universal. We are universal, one family, all calling God our Father. Now, I wanted to begin today by emphasizing we are one family. <coughs> because we are living in a moment in history that seeks a new form of segregation that tries to separate us into various groups. I was thinking about it, and I figured, and I had to write all of this down to make sure that I got it as much right as possible, but right now I would not be your brother. Instead, I would be a privileged, white, middle-aged, obese male. That would be how I would be judged. Now, the utter Failure, and I mean that most <coughs> sincerely, the complete, total, utter failure in this line of thought is there are certain things that join us universally. And one of those is suffering. Specifically today, as we come as a family, the suffering of cancer. As we know through our own affiliation, whether we ourselves have been affected personally or some member of our family has been affected by cancer, cancer is an equal opportunity employer. Cancer does not attack only certain ethnicities, certain genders, certain wealth classes, certain people with sexual orientations, cancer can afflict everyone, from the youngest to the oldest. And today, we realize that that universal suffering is something that we can combat through a universal prayer and a universal love and support. Today, we are one universal family made up of those who have suffered cancer, those who have beaten cancer, those who will one day possibly suffer with cancer. We are a family that consists of people who have taken care of loved ones who have suffered with cancer. We have taken care of deceased loved ones. And I hope that one day somebody will be there to take care of us if we develop cancer. And in this time, we come together and we not only ask each other to pray, love, and support us. We are able to, as one family, ask those that we do not see to pray, love, and support us. As you so well know, we often take our liturgies and place them on our parish website and our, on YouTube, on our parish Facebook page, so that those who are throughout our parish who are unable to attend, and interestingly enough, people have an opportunity to come and listen to us and pray with us and support us in different parts of the world. Today we gather with all of those, our brothers and sisters, and we pray. But God in his love and mercy doesn't just stop there with those people that we see. He allows the saints in heaven to join their prayers with ours for people afflicted with cancer. That's the beauty of God. Because as 
So many of us will say, our deceased loved ones, we truly believe they're in heaven, don't we? And in heaven, God allows them to continue to love, support, and pray for us. When a person goes to heaven, they don't forget who we are. I've heard that offered by people, that once you get to heaven, God, you'll forget everything. It's like a giant mind wipe. And you're just there with everybody and everything's fresh. That would not make sense with the history of Christianity. It makes no sense at all. You're there with your loved ones. And you, as a saint in heaven, you're praying for your loved ones to be the best people they could be on earth and to join with you in heaven. So our deceased relatives, our saints who are in heaven, they're praying for us. And today we specifically call upon one of our brothers who has preceded us. And that brother is Saint Peregrine, the patron saint of cancer sufferers. So who was Peregrine? Peregrine was born in Italy in 1260. He was born in the town of Flori. And I probably mispronounced it. My Italian's not the best. But what is happening in 1260 is Peregrine is born into a situation where Mother Church has the Papal States and she's always at war with different other earthly powers. If you remember uh, one of the old movies, The Agony and the Ecstasy captured it well, where Pope Julius and Michelangelo over the painting of the ceiling of the Sistine chapel, uh, chapel. The Pope would go off and fight a war against another empire, then come back and say the Mass. That is the environment Peregrine is born up into. And his family, his community is anti-papal. So the Pope sends a representative to go to work out some issues. That representative would become St. Philip Brinzini. Peregrine, along with other youth, and you know what it was like. We've all been 18 to 20. We were nine feet tall and bulletproof. We knew everything. Peregrine and his group <coughs> decided to pester the saint. And as Philip was leaving the town, Peregrine ran up and slapped him across the face. Philip, who was known for a violent temper, did something contrary to that. He turned, looked at Peregrine in the face and said, would you like the other side? And offered his other cheek. Peregrine, so moved by this, would go into the chapel, make a complete repentance, would spend time on his knees asking God to forgive him for all the insults he had leveled against his other brothers and sisters. Would eventually convert fully to Catholicism and join the Servite Order. As a brother and priest, he was a great and eloquent speaker, a great confessor. Toward the end of his life, Peregrine is afflicted with cancer, cancer of the leg and foot. And at that time, the treatment was amputation. The night prior to the surgery, Peregrine prayed. He stood and prayed. And he asked God to give him the strength to be able to accept whatever was God's will. <clears throat> If it was amputation, God help me. Let me accept it. If it would be death, help me. Let me accept it. If it would be a miraculous healing, help me. Let me accept it. God in his love and mercy chose to heal Peregrine. Jesus appeared to him, touched his leg, and completely, miraculously cured him. Peregrine would go on to live the rest of his life as he lived prior to that moment, being a good, 
gentle, humble priest, confessor, and eloquent speaker. Peregrine's reputation would become famous, and before he was to meet his maker, people started to already speak of him as a future saint. After his death, he was promoted by the local community and eventually would become a saint. Today, we will ask Peregrine to intercede for those who suffer with cancer. To go to the Almighty God and ask Jesus, for Jesus himself is the divine healer, ask Jesus to heal people. And we will do that with the relic of Saint Peregrine. I said in the beginning it's a first class relic. Some might say, well, Father, what does that mean? What is a relic? A relic is a part of a saint, a body part. It could be any part, really, of the saint. It could be an item which is intimately connected with the saint. A prayer book, the Bible, part of their clothing that they wore. In which we take and we hold up and we honor. And in which we ask God to help us, like the early Christians, and all this developed from our early Christian ancestors, especially those in Rome. As the those in Rome witnessed their brothers and sisters, other Christians, being martyred for the faith in most horrific ways, they would go to the grave sites, and they would pray over the graves of those who had died, and they'd ask God, God, help us. Help us to imitate the faith that this, our brother or sister, showed. And they would ask that saint, pray for them. Today we join with this almost 2,000 year old history of doing the same thing. Today we ask Saint Peregrine to help us, to help our loved ones who have cancer. I would always encourage you, if you're able to come to the 4 o'clock Mass on the last weekend, we will pray, love, and support, and ask St. Peregrine to do the same for all of us. <laughs> Through the intercession of St. Peregrine, may God bless us and heal us from the disease of cancer. And Almighty God be with you. May he bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> Let us stand now for our profession of faith, our truth. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And God the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and reconciled. He suffered death and was buried. He rose of him the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the giver of life. Who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, as I spoke through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
together as one family in faith, let us offer to God our prayers and our needs. For Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy, with the people entrusted to their charge, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, I pray. For those who hold public office and those who assist him in promoting the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, I pray. For those who travel by sea, land, or air, for captives and all held in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, I pray. For all of us gathered in this sacred place by faith and devotion, by love and reverence for God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, I pray. For all of those in our community, both here present and those watching on video, who are suffering, whether from physical, emotional, or mental illnesses, that they may be comforted by the resurrected Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, I pray. And for those intentions in our parish prayer book, Joyce Lumpkin and family, Henry Phillips and daughter, Frank and Mary Cote, Dave Beatty, Bill and Edna Adcox, Valerie Christiani, Olivia Bush, Gus Lynn, all military and their families, and the unemployed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, joined through the intercession of St. Thomas the Apostle, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Norma Hall and family for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude with the prayer in honor of the Blessed Trinity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of your name, prior to the good of all the local church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the power working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of despair, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <laughs> The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that for taking up the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one but the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <coughs> Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Live not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to choose but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Join me in the communion verse, the first verse. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and let me get all his benefits.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify your Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Prayer to St. Michael for the protection of our families. Holy Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power, thrust into hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The divine praise is protection against storms, hurricanes, and other disasters. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Consoler. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God.